This surrealism portrait collage is such a fun way to express your creativity and explore an important movement in art. You need hardly any materials, an Elmer's glue stick, a paper or surface to glue to, and either magazines, newspapers, or anything that you can find that you can cut images from. Your collage can have a theme or make a statement, or you can just make it a random mashup of facial features. If you were to Google, what is surrealism? This is what you would see. So it's a 20th century movement that was based on um, the subconscious, the inner workings of your mind, and irrational juxtaposition of images. Meet Salvador Dali, Surrealism's arguably most famous artist. This painting is called The Persistence of Memory, and most people remember it because of the unusual, or shall I say surreal, melted clocks. Today I'm focusing more on collage, and here are four of my favorite collage artists. We will be focusing mostly on artist Hannah Hawk, but if you're an art teacher, look these up. These are some really great examples to show and study with your students. And if you think, hey, this looks familiar, I have used these four exact artists before in my Surrealist Landscape Collage, which you can check out that link above. Once you have your materials gathered, search through your magazine, newspaper, or whatever you're using for your images and find one person that speaks to you. This is a violinist that I found in our BBC Music magazine. My husband gets that subscription. Don't tell him that I'm cutting it up. Then you're going to glue this one person down as the base of your surrealist portrait. I'm using my Elmer's glue stick and my students always ask me, oh my gosh, does it dry clear or purple? And it does dry clear. The purple's convenient because you can see where you've applied the glue. Now that you have the base for your portrait, start finding images of other people that you can mash up with your base portrait. This illustration of this Italian composer is so much fun because he is wearing this crazy wig. And I think I'm gonna use the wig, yup, on top of her blonde hair. Keep in mind you are using images of actual people. So this composer or violinist, they actually exist. So anytime you're using images that are not yours, you want to change them significantly so that you're not just using the image that a photographer took. I'm also borrowing the eye from this Italian composer because I love the effect of a photograph with an illustrated or drawn eye on top of it. With this mashup, I'm using an eye turned the other direction because I love the quirky vibe that it provides. Now it's time to find a mouth and I wanna do something really inspired by surrealism. Since my collage is not tethered to reality, I'm even considering using a beak or animal features. I also have these two bearded and mustache mouths. But nope, that is really creepy. Sorry, Hannah Hawk, I just can't be as surreal as you are. So I like this mouth because like the eye, it's turned the wrong direction. It's the right size, it kind of fits her face, other than it wouldn't actually be in this position. But I'm going to push the envelope a little bit and see if I can find something a little more outrageous. And wow, this would be it. This mouth is humongous. Totally doesn't fit her face. Um, it's kind of, well, not kind of, it's extremely creepy and sci-fi. So although I glued it down, I am having second thoughts. Keep in mind when using people's faces and facial features, you want to be considerate about what statements you are making. Anytime you mix facial features and people's skin color, race, or gender, you wanna be considerate and very thoughtful about what message you are sending with your composition. And although I did not have a specific theme or idea in mind, I feel like the wig actually looks like a helmet and these goggles make her look like some sort of sci-fi or Star Wars pilot. So I'm gonna kind of go down that road. When I was searching, I found this mouth that doesn't quite fit because of the shadow. It's much darker, but also it's not as creepy as that giant mouth. Since I have several layers on her face, I'm going to move on to some accessories for her lower body. So I wanna just give her a little bit of attention and I found this like brooch necklace situation and I thought it looked like a medal. Maybe she's an award-winning spacecraft pilot and I'm still considering what other accessories I want to add to her and what changes I want to make to her face. Artists like Hannah Hawk uses collage and photo montage to make statements about the world that she lived in. Imagine being a woman artist during the war-torn Europe of World War II. I'm sure there are plenty of political statements to be made. 
I love the collage technique because it offers the experience of thinking about what your artwork represents, what symbols you can use, and how you can combine symbols to send a message. Now I'm going to stop collaging here and I'm going to jazz things up a little bit with my Sharpie pen. So just because I started out just using magazine doesn't mean I can't enhance my work of art by drawing on it, adding paint. Sometimes you just can't find exactly what you need in a magazine. Although it would be pretty cool to add these lines by cutting out dashes of collage. It really just depends on the look that you're going for. I want to make my woman pilot a little more sci-fi. So I'm going to draw some details around her eyes to give her a little bit more of an alien quality. And then I thought, wouldn't it be weird and unusual if the goggles on her helmet slash wig also had eyes in them? So with surrealism, you don't have to make something that looks real. It can be from a, your imagination, from an alternate universe. And so I'm really embracing that with these final details. I thought the white background was boring and I'm going to use this shaving cream marbled paper that I made. Click the link above for a full tutorial on how to make that. They make amazing backgrounds. I thought it had the perfect kind of swirly, twirly, galaxy, larger than life effect that my sci-fi pilot deserves. You could certainly create a landscape for your portrait to be on top of. Click the link for that tutorial. I think that this is just the right amount of color. I love how the red matches her scarf and it gives her this otherworldly quality that I'm going for. I'm going to trim the edges because I left a little bit of white space and I'm really missing my paper cutter that's just hanging out all by itself in my classroom. This surrealism portrait collage is a great way to show creativity and art teachers, there are so many art history connections to be made from Hannah Hawk to Romare Bearden. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you want to learn more about collage techniques, check out these tutorials. If you're an art teacher, check out my website, thatartteacher.com for all of my long form blog posts and student work examples.